Dartmoor is internationally famous for its archaeology, but in particular for its Bronze Age landscapes which survive um, with a huge variety of sites. And these include ceremonial sites, the components of which are stone rows, stone circles and burials. But we also have settlement sites with over 5,000 roundhouses and a large area of field boundaries, um, which are now internationally known as reefs. The burials come in all forms and shapes. Um, and this is one particular form of burial. And this is actually a kist. We have about 200 of these, and you can see this is a very small one. It's actually a small stone chest with stone sides, and it would have had a lid. This one, um, because of this size, we think it probably contained a cremation. Many of them are much bigger, probably actually carried, um, contained the whole body, probably in the fetal position. They were all covered over with lids. That all those lids have long since gone. The peculiar thing about them, which we don't really understand, is their alignment. They seem to align on a northwest southeast direction, that is their long side, so that's obviously very deliberate. It has to be very much more than a coincidence. This is a very large kiss, as you can see. Um, this one most likely actually contained a body, that is an inhumation, probably curled up in the fetal position. Most of Dartmoor kisses were, were excavated oh, over 100 years ago by the Victorian antiquaries. The sort of things they were finding were pot, little bits of flint, charcoal, but certainly no trace of a human body. However, this all changed in 2011 when a prehistoric burial kiss was excavated on Whitehorse Hill on northern Dartmoor. The excavation took place as the kiss was at risk of collapse as it was constructed within a peat mound which was rapidly being eroded away by the weather. The excavation was to reveal an extraordinary collection of items including cremated human bones, organic remains as well as high status grave goods. Join the specialists as they discover how someone lived on Dartmoor about 4,000 years ago and what their treasured possessions were. We're here at the Wiltshire Conservation Service Labs where microexcavation of the kist contents has been carried out along with analysis and conservation of the individual objects. So far the work on the kist has revealed a number of different objects. On the very bottom of the burial we've got a leather and textile object and on top of this an animal pelt which contains a human cremation. There's also a woven bag which contains a number of personal items including um, a woven bracelet with tin studs, a metal pin, some wooden ear studs and nearly 200 beads uh, made of amber, shale, clay and also tin. Um, and all of these are being looked at by a group of international specialists. Some are really unique and we haven't found anything of this quality or quantity before in the UK so it's been a really exciting project to be involved in. The richness of these finds and the nature of them suggests that this is a burial of someone important and also that this possibly was a burial of a female. Because of these, we can almost bring to life this woman who lived on Dartmoor 4,000 years ago. I lived on a high moor above a river valley in a small community. But how can you know so much about me when I lived and died 4,000 years ago? I spoke a language you would not understand today. Some of my community were farmers and some were hunters. We lived off the land and built our homes with the things we found around us, stone, wood and thatch. We made many things for ourselves, but we also traded with others. I was held in high esteem by my people. You would have noticed my necklace and my possessions. The things we valued highly, we traded with people far away. Some of the beads in my necklace are made from shale. These can only be found close to the seashore, while the precious amber beads were from far overseas and only someone of my importance would have had things of such rarity. We believed amber to hold magical qualities which could heal 
and also ward off evil spirits. My finely woven bracelet was created by skilled craftspeople. The studs were made using the material you know as tin. This could be found in great quantity in the rivers and streams. The making of the studs and of the tin bead in my beautiful necklace was a process held in great awe by my people. Not many people knew how to do this. The magic of fire was used and like many of my people we held this sacred. Great heat was used to turn the materials we found on the land into metals such as tin and copper. We mix those together to make bronze. We did not have the sophisticated medicines that you have today but we knew much about herbs and plants and how to use them to help against illnesses. But my lifespan was much shorter to yours. When I died, I was cremated. I shall not reveal to you too much of the ceremonies and what my people had to deal with in my passing. You know so little about my religion, but hopefully in years to come, you will discover more. My remains were wrapped in an animal hide and laid to rest near where I lived. My beautiful necklace was placed in my favorite woven basket with a flint tool and ear studs. These studs are made from the wood of the spindle tree, which you can still find growing today. These would have been buried with me to take me on to the next world. My burial site was revered by my people who often came and visited this place, but eventually they stopped coming. I have laid here for thousands of years, and many people have been here and not known of me. Now, as in my lifetime, thousands of years ago, I hope that you will learn more about me, and how I lived, and more about my people, who are now all long gone. Think of me, and my people, as you walk across this land, and respect the things we have left behind in this beautiful place.